Hello, good afternoon, and welcome. We are back here in studios. We're going to talk some sports with Val. Lots of uh, lots of things going on. We took some time off there over the summer. I hope you guys enjoyed our coverage of both Pulaski and Fulton County fairs. Had a lot of fun over at the fairs over the summer. And uh, we're getting back into it here. 24-25 school year is underway. The uh, fall sports seasons are already going with girls golf. We're going to talk a lot about that. But uh, Val, you had some pretty big milestones uh, this last week. You're four-year anniversary here at RTC and uh, 20 years that you've been covering Rochester. So uh, that goes along with now our start of our fifth season of Talking Sports with Val. And Steve, let's start off with a big breaking news story right off the bat. Rochester is expected to hire Cal Stone as its new athletic director pending approval at Monday school board meeting. All right. That last name sounds familiar. Yeah. Cal Stone is the son of Matt Stone, who is the girls' basketball coach and athletic director at Wabash High School. And former athletic director at Fremont. He has been the AD at Fremont yeah. the last two years. He is expected now to move over to Rochester and wow. be the AD there. Cal Stone is only 25 years old. Mm -hmm. Definitely has to be one of the younger athletic directors in the state, of course. And it's interesting because we also have Sam Sturdivant in our coverage area. Sam is... I think 26 or 27, he also has to be one of the younger ADs, but I guess Cal is going to usurp him on the age front. But we've got two now very young, it looks like we're, it looks like we're going to have two very young athletic directors here in our area. Well, and that's coming off of, uh, you know, Jason Breeden uh, being, and, and actually Damon Binkley now yeah. at Argus. He's, I don't know what Damon is, 24, 25. Yeah. Yeah, 26, maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. later 20s, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, a lot of uh, youth in the athletic directors around our area. Cal Stone, okay. You know, uh, I liked what, you know, we had some dealings with him when we went up there for uh, regionals for softball with mm -hmm. Caston a few years ago and uh, just talking with, with his dad, Matt, over at Wabash when we go over there for, for baseball, just uh, really like what he was doing over there. So mm -hmm. that should be exciting. Right, Cal uh, has some experience as a tennis coach, and he has some experience working f under his dad on, in a, for a basketball program. So, you know, people always like it when they have coaching experience before they get an AD job, and Cal does have that for as young as he is. Mm -hmm. So now he will take over, uh, presumably, uh, for... Kevin Reaney, who was uh, dismissed by the school board back on July 25th, so that job was open two weeks or what, about three weeks. We didn't think it would stay open for long, and it looks like uh, that uh, Jana Vance and the rest of the board and the, the decision makers in charge have made their decision. Yeah, yeah, it should, should be a good one. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're curious to see, again, uh, taking over at a time where things are looking pretty good for Rochester sports. I mean, you know, the baseball team going to semi-state, the softball team going to regional, it's been a, you know, it's definitely a, a lot of fun over the spring. The wrestling program is in extremely good shape with five state qualifiers. Uh, Football team had a really good year last year yeah. looking for that. The golf team is off to a fantastic start right, here with, already this fall. Right, with two state qualifiers last year, and mm -hmm. if anything, those, will again, we'll be talking about that, but they look even better this year. And Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, that's, uh, that's some interesting news there. I hadn't okay. heard that. So. Cal Stone yeah. at Rochester, yeah. Yeah, wow. So, uh, yeah, welcome. This is our fifth season of Talking Sports with Val, and a lot happened over the summer. For one thing, Sarah Hildebrandt won an Olympic gold medal in wrestling, and why are we talking about a girl from Penn winning? Well, it was worth, it is worth noting I did see her wrestle in the regional here when I was at Rochester back in 2010, so what an amazing story. And, of course, she beat, she beat a kid from Rochester, Zeke Weiss, and little did we know at the time she was going to win a gold medal someday. So that's a story I guess Zeke can tell uh, his, mm. his family uh, someday. Well, at one point, I don't know what it ended up being, but at one point, the Indiana Olympians, if you would have took them out of the, the medal mix, they would have came in in 12th yeah. overall. Yeah. That's how many Indiana kids that we had that were winning medals in the Olympics. So right. great showing from the Hoosiers. Yeah, obviously the big one was Cole Hawker winning the, the men's 1,500 yeah. meters. That was an incredible comeback. But, yeah. The yeah. IHSA posted that uh, his senior state, uh, one mile meet when he won by like 35 seconds. Yeah, that was pretty uh, pretty cool. Yeah, to see. yeah, he was running a cathedral five years ago and he just won an Olympic gold medal. Yeah, uh, we should mention Rob Hoffman. He's a Valley grad. He's the new women's basketball coach at St. Mary's. Yeah, 
Uh, so get, congratulations to him. Long time trying assistant. Long time trying, yeah. Yeah. Uh, North Miami has a new principal. She's Carice Cabbage. We know Carice. She is the former volleyball coach, long time volleyball coach at North Miami. Before she got into administration, she replaces uh, Matt Storm. Uh, Matt Storm is the new principal at Logansport Junior High School. So okay. North Miami needed a principal, and they've hired Carice Cabbage. Uh, what did we do over the summer? Well, we wrote pr- uh, profiles of all of our new basketball coaches. Uh, Argus girls coach Brian Jennings, uh, Pioneer girls coach David McWhorter, uh, Tippecanoe Valley girls coach Rebecca Parker, uh, Argus boys coach Nick Kindig, uh, Culver boys coach Drew Mawson. Uh, we wrote where are, the, where are They Now articles about Macy Brown and about Spencer Vanderweel and about Garrett Weiniger. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we did all RTC Spring Athletes of the Year. Our softball athlete of the, our softball player of the year was Edison Zippelman. Our baseball player of the year was Tanner Reinertz. Our girls tennis player of the year was Kerrigan Callahan from Valley for the second straight year. Our boys golfer of the year was Noah Riffle. Our girls track athlete of the year was Betty Shepard, and our boys track athlete of the year for the second straight year was Wade Jones. Yeah. So congratulations to those guys. Yeah, really productive summer. Um, if you missed those articles, you can always go back and, and uh, reread those mm-hmm. at uh, rtc4.com and then click on Val Sports Blog or go to rtc4sports.com and that'll take you right to the blog. Uh, a lot of really good stuff, a lot of informative stuff there. And uh, again, if you want to go back and, and rewatch some of our uh, coverage of uh, Fulton County or Pulaski County Fairs, you can go there on RTC4. It's always archived as well. So. We had uh, yeah, and I hung out at the fair too. Wrote some fair queen articles. Wrote about Sydney Nelson, who run uh, uh, Grand Heifer and Grand Steer. Yeah, I got over to Pulaski County for the first time in yeah. your career this yeah. year as well. Wrote about Maggie Smith. Yeah, went to the cat show. Yeah, yeah. I got a funny story. We got just a second here, mm-hmm. but I got a, a thank you card. Actually, I, mm-hmm. we really appreciate all the thank you cards. It, it really, I've got a wall in my office for all the thank you cards. So Me too, I, yeah, I do too. Yeah. I, I do appreciate that because it feels like what we're doing is, is being appreciated. But I got one from Chesney Miller, who is the Fulton County Fair Queen. And at the end, she said thank you and all that stuff. But at the end, she signed it Queen Chesney. <laughs> so I, spo- I suppose if you see her, you got to refer to her as Queen Chesney. Yeah. You know? So, uh, but uh, mm-hmm. got to. It was, you know, it's a neat dynamic at the Fulton yeah. County Fair because I sat basically right there where all the queens sat and where all the, you know, judges and everything, you know, congregate there on the, in the stage. So it got time to talk to to Chesney and to, uh, you know, Strasser and and all the different uh, Alexa queens. Alexa Finke, yeah, 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 Alexa too, um, as well. So. But, uh, yeah, Queen Chesney. Yeah. <laughs> One other story we mentioned, uh, Rebecca Parker being hired at Valley. When Valley takes on Triton next year, the Triton coach will be Ashley Faulkner. Mm-hmm. Of course, Rebecca and Ashley were college teammates at the University of Evansville. Yeah. Now they'll be going against each other at the as Ashley Faulkner just got the Triton girls' job earlier this week. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that was open and heard that one, so that was uh, yeah. a little bit of a surprise. But, uh, you know, good for her, obviously, being a, an alum and – yeah. She does have coaching experience over at Culver, so yeah, and a great high school player won two state championships in her high school career. Yeah, yeah, two thousand, two thousand one. Yep, back to back. Yeah. So, all right. Well, uh, anything else here as we get going? No, nope, we'll we'll have we'll talk we'll go kind of school by school uh, when we come back. All right, be back here with more talking sports with Val. Are you in need of branded apparel, promotional products, custom signs, graphic design for your business, church, or organization? The Winning Edge can provide a dedicated service rep to ensure you have custom products when you need them. Need a way to provide custom items to your employees or customers? The Winning Edge can set up a customized Edge store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause with no additional charge. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, promotional items, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide the results you need for success. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090, going to thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, X, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hey, it's Dale Hart Jr., and I'm here today on behalf of Nationwide and Jennings Insurance Agency to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, off-road vehicles like ATVs and UTVs. Now, I know we all love to get out there and ride through the mud and the dirt, 
But the truth is, we need to be more mindful of our own safety and the safety of others. In recent years, there's been a huge increase of off-road vehicle usage, which unfortunately means there's also been a rise in accidents. Whether you're a new user or a seasoned rider, we can turn this trend around by continuing to focus on safety. For starters, I recommend that you check out the safety resources and training courses available on Nationwide's website at nationwide.com slash ATV safety. Let's all do our part to make sure we're staying safe out there. And thanks for riding with me. All right, welcome back here talking sports with Val. And as we get into uh, kind of previewing some of our uh, fall sports here, we've already got one uh, fall sport that is underway. The girls' golf uh, gets started pretty early here in the state. And, boy, I tell you what, Rochester's got a team this year, and they're led by the uh, junior Olivia Bailey. And I think she's got medals in, in every match they've uh, had so far. Until last night. Oh, I didn't Until hear about we last are night. About, well, well, we'll start off with the, how the season's gone on. They won the Kankakee Valley Invitational with a 339, which at the time was just one shot off the school record. And that was at Sandy Pines Golf Club in DeMont, which is key, because that's where the regional is every year. And that's, just, that's a great number for there. Yeah, that is a terrific number. They, yeah. they, there was still kind of a thought that the, the course would be tougher uh, once, it, once you get to regional, but still, I mean, Olivia Bailey was the medalist with the 77, and we were all kind of wondering what kind of shape would Olivia be in. You know, she broke her hip last spring playing tennis, and but, I mean, she had, we, we, we later found out she had been basically playing pretty consistently since June. And needless to say, she was in midseason form with a 77 right off the bat. And then, uh, so they won that tournament by two strokes over Lake Central. Um, then they were third at the Kokomo Invite uh, with a 336. That was at Kokomo Country Club last Saturday, and that did break the school record. Mm -hmm. They had shot a 338 on three different occasions, one in, once in 2011, once in 2012, and once in 2013. That's when they had the Lingenfelter sisters. So for that, for that record to go down, uh, that was very impressive. And again, Olivia shot another 77, and she was medalist at that again. Uh, and uh, on top of that, Lexi Haw shot an 89, which was a personal best for 18 holes for her. So uh, yeah, it was a, and they finished third behind Noblesville, and uh, Noblesville won at Westfield was second. Whereas both of those teams are in the top five of the state, and both of those teams sent their JV teams to Kokomo. Mm -hmm. So it says about their JV teams if they oh, wow. if they were able to win the Kokomo invite, mm -hmm. and how, how good their varsity teams must be. They were the varsity teams were playing at a tournament down in Carmel. So, hmm. but still, I mean, third place in that field that's a really good accomplishment. And I thought the Kokomo Country Club was I'd never been there before. I think it was a tougher course than. Uh, I think people have been talking about it. It was pretty narrow mm -hmm. on the fairways, but uh, and it kind of has some strategically placed bunkers. So, yeah, 336 there. Then they won a three-way match uh, at uh, uh, Northwestern. Excuse me, that was at Wabash. That was at Honeywell Golf Course in Wabash on Wednesday. They'd be Northwestern and Wabash. Rochester had a 167, Wabash had a 202, and Northwestern had a 215. And then uh, last night they were second at uh, in a in a nine-hole match at Warsaw at Stonehenge. Okay. Warsaw won with a 169. Rochester had a 180. And Triton had a two, uh, I think it was a 238. Mm -hmm. uh, Warsaw has Abby Peterson. She was tied for 10th at state last year. And she was the medalist with a 35 mm. in what had to have been a smoking duel with Olivia Bailey. Olivia shot 36. Oh, so she wasn't far off. Not far, Not off, far off at all, all. but Abby mm -hmm. Peterson beat her by one. Mm -hmm. uh, Lexi Hawes did not play last night. Um, Laney McGonis moved up from five to four, and Lily Chips moved from JV to the five on the varsity. So, I, uh, And that turned out to be an 11-stroke difference. So I, I we, we saw, uh, we don't know exactly what was wrong with Lexi, but we saw her... Wednesday night at Honeywell, she looked like she was not feeling that great. So okay. I, I think she might have just been ill. So hopefully Lexi will be back soon. But a 180, even without Lexi, that's that's pretty good. I mean, mm -hmm. Lexi had uh, shot 45 at Honeywell. Yeah. So another really good round. Actually, she was the number th no, the th number three scorer, and Molly Moore uh, was four at, with a 47. Yeah. So, again, it's not just, again, it, it's not just Olivia Bailey. Ava Thomas has been playing great, shooting in the low 80s in both of the 18-hole matches. And then you've got Lexi. Molly Moore has stepped in for her 
uh, not graduated sister, yeah, uh, Peyton, yeah. and Molly has been terrific. She shot a 47, and she was down on that. But, I mean, geez, uh, for a freshman in your yeah. first week, essentially, as a, as a high school golfer. Yeah, um, there's, there's a ton of potential there with her. I mean, her ceiling is really high. Yeah, yeah. So, again, the, the team's off to a really great start, and they're going to the Western Invite on Saturday. That'll be another tough tournament over at Chippendale in Kokomo. Mm -hmm. uh, boys tennis. We have some boys tennis kind of breaking news. Uh, the season starts on Tuesday. We, it was supposed to start at Valley. Now that match will be at home. It will be at oh. Rochester. Okay. Valley will travel to Rochester on Tuesday. That will be the season opener. It will be Valley's third match of the year and Rochester's first. So hmm. we'll see if Valley, maybe if they get some matches in, if that will be an advantage for them or what. But uh, Valley goes to Marion on Saturday, and they have a home match with C on Monday. So... Uh, again, but it's a veteran Rochester team. You know, Tanner Reinert's back for his second year at number one singles. After that, Rochester with a home match against Triton on Thursday, and then they travel to the John Glenn Invite next Saturday. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a pretty experienced Rochester team. I mean, Jack Reffitt and Carter Meredith and uh, Harrison Dunwoody and Brady Morgan are all back. So, uh, yeah, I expect to be a, a veteran Rochester team. Also, Janet, um, Janet Shawley is going to be an... Uh, the assistant coach uh, under Mason Heidi. Of course, she was Janet Mellinger back during her high school days as a lady zebra. So, okay. and a really good tennis player herself. So, okay. she'll be added to Mason Heidi's uh, coaching staff. Okay. Some that's uh, cross country news. Uh, the season uh, starts at the Jacob Graff Invite. That's next Saturday at Logansport, the 24th. Uh, there are four boys on the team. The most experienced is Reese Johnson. Uh, there are five girls on the team, and the three girls who are the three returning girls include Allison Calloway, Cadence Bradley, and Brooklyn Chandler back from last year. And, of course, mm -hmm. Allison had a really good year, made it to regional last year, mm -hmm. got, in the, got into the 21s by the end of the year. Uh, really excited to see what, what Allison does. And Cadence Bradley, Bradley and Brooklyn Chandler made great strides, literally yeah. great strides yeah. as well. Uh, girls soccer, we, have, we saw 13 girls on the roster that we received, three seniors, two juniors, seven sophomores, and one freshman. Uh, I guess the big news uh, this year is that Miley Heinzman will not be the goalkeeper. She's moving to midfield. Okay. And uh, uh, so uh, the three seniors are a uh, Adeline Samuels, Audrey Wagner, and Skyla Mitchell. So, again, with Audrey and Skyla, you'll have two really veteran defenders back there. And uh, Makaya Harding is the new goalkeeper. She's a sophomore. Okay. Of course, we know her from softball. Yeah. She's a catcher in softball, and she's going to be the goalkeeper for soccer. Okay. Boys soccer. The 22 boys came out for soccer. It was great to see those numbers at Picture Day last week, including 10 seniors mm -hmm. and six juniors. So a pretty veteran team. Aiden Harrington, we've kind of known him as a football player. He's moving over to soccer. He's going to be he's gonna be the goalkeeper. This year, of course, Parker Wallace, a hard act to follow. Parker was a four-year yeah. starter and goalkeeper, and he made about one or two highlight saves a game. He did. He did. And that's mm -hmm. that's going to be some big shoes to fill, and, and that's, you know, Obviously, a big important role, but uh, you got some really good defenders back there too. You know, Grant Bailey; he's just been doing a fantastic job on the defense. And mm -hmm. you know, we've been watching this team kind of progress. These kids started out, yeah. you know, playing really, really important roles, really young, and yeah. now they're getting to that point, and now they're actually in a in a sectional that they might have a shot at too. Yeah, right. Carlos Placenci is a kid. Rabur Tindi. Mm -hmm. uh, these kids. I mean, they they love soccer. I mean, they play it all summer. I mean, they. Yeah. I mean, they, there's no off season for them. They love it, and I I'm really curious to see Wyatt Davis is coming back for a senior year. White. We I think we thought of White as maybe more of a defender or midfield. He's been more of a striker this year. So let's see how okay. he does. But again, seven teams in that sectional. All public school teams. The sectional will be at McConaughey on the turf there, mm -hmm. uh, coming up uh, starting October seventh. So we'll see how they do. But this is year three for Coach Backus, and I think this is going to be his best team. Yeah. Uh, volleyball. Twenty six girls came out for volleyball at Rochester. Wow. I mean, again, they graduated Keaton Doran, but now they get ten freshmen coming in. Yeah. So they're they're going to have enough for a freshman team and a JV team. Um, uh, seniors include uh, Riley Clevenger, Dara Strasser, uh, Mia Hadeshell, Lily Lett, and Audrey Bollinger. And again, most of those girls are in their th at least their third year in the varsity, mm -hmm. uh, if not longer. And then the freshman, uh, Amaro Wiringa, we saw her at the scrimmage last night at North Miami. And it was funny, I went up to Audrey Bollinger right after the scrimmage. I said, Audrey, she reminds me of you. And Audrey said, that's exactly what I thought. She's a young me. Hmm. So Amaro, you know, again, a lot of freshmen, they... They, they look a little reluctant sometimes, 
Amara was swinging at full bore, and she's got a hammer uh, already. Mm -hmm. So she was very aggressive out there. So really looking forward to seeing how her, she progresses. Um, uh, or if, I think she's probably going to split some time between JV and varsity. She's the one freshman, though. We're gonna we're gonna see a lot of over these next few years, but uh, yeah, and we will uh, we will be over at the high school on Tuesday with uh, opening up our coverage of the fall yeah. season with the uh, Rochester Zebras volleyball team taking on Pioneer and right season opener is at Plymouth on Saturday, but that'll yeah, be the our, our opener yeah, is but our on opener Tuesday. will be Tuesday, yeah. yeah. So again, uh, but boy, get get there early for JV matches because they are going to be a fun JV team to watch. Uh, when you talk about not only the freshmen but the sophomores too, Kyra Doran. McKenna McKee, uh, Ryland Strasser, uh, she played some libero last night. She's, this, it's a fun, uh, Jenna Cipher, it's a fun athletic JV volleyball team to watch. You're going to want to get there early for some JV matches. So, uh, yeah, but uh, really, really intriguing group. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think you can just tell they're playing with a lot more confidence, just a lot more physicality. Uh, Coach Linnea Strasser had talked about you know, we, we were way too predictable on offense last year, and we were just – teams were just able to set up their block for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now they, you can see last night they made a lot of strides already. And, again, you can tell Aubrey Wilson has so many more uh, different avenues she can go to, yeah. and that's going to create a lot more open swings for other players. Yeah, great passer. And, you know, what we saw out of them last year is just a very, very young, inexperienced team. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of times where there was – glimpses of what was to come and they just couldn't put it all together you know and, and get those full three sets but mm -hmm. um you could see it's there yeah and so it's going to be interesting to see if they can put it together this year that's going to be fun right and remember they had that win at wabash toward the end that was kind of the start of yeah we can do it yeah we can yeah. do it there's yeah. a sense of progress there so yeah. yeah uh so we will see and then football last but not least um we count 43 boys on the roster that we had that was given numbers, to us, in, yeah. including 12 freshmen. Mm -hmm. uh, the seniors include Trevor Wally. Uh, Davis Reaney's out for football this year. He's going to be the kicker. First time he's played football since the eighth grade. I talked to Davis last night. Mm -hmm. uh, Drew Bowers is playing football. First time since the fourth grade for Drew. Really? And he is going to start at both wide receiver and safety. Uh, Kai Murphy. Um, uh, Pinder. Um, not Brendan Pinder, it's the other Pinder. But he's going to be a big part of the team. Xavier Vance, James Gardner, Maddox Jewell. Um, so those are going to be the seniors on the team this year. And it's going to be, you know, Kai Murphy is a kid who I think is really going to emerge this year. Um, he, You know, he, he's going to play a big role, you know, possibly that linebacker spot. Uh, and, again, James Gardner, uh, he looks like he, that center spot, he looks like he's earned it. Uh, we talked with Ron Schaefer. He really said that James has worked hard this summer to get that job. So he's going to be at center with Callan Faverda moving to guard and Mason Heisey playing the other guard. So Faverda and Heisey at the guard, Xavier Vance at left tackle, and Matt Crossland, who's a junior, has really, uh, he said he's done a good job and is going to be, looks like he's going to be the right tackle. Xavier looks like he's uh, doing well coming off of that injury in the LCC game yeah. last uh, last fall. And he threw shot put in track last yeah. spring and went yeah. to some camps. Went to in, at some Big, Big Ten, Ten school, camps, yeah, yeah, IU in Wisconsin. So, yeah. yeah, I think there's. I think he's pre. Uh, we, we had the the football digest. I think he was preseason class two A All State. So, yeah. yeah, Xavier Vance is not going to surprise anybody anymore. Six five, I saw in there listed 6'5", 320. Yeah, of course, when you're six five three twenty, you don't sneak up on anybody do you no no uh -huh. but you know he's very mobile for 320 yeah, yeah. I mean, when i was in school 320 probably wasn't moving yeah and he can he can definitely move so yeah so just really happy yeah you know saw him during picture day he's definitely in definitely in a, in a good mood and definitely ready to go so yeah. uh, should be a should be a fun another fun season uh no private schools in the section i think we talked about that when the sectionals came out l late last april and seven new teams in the sectional from last year yeah, so you talk about new sectionals. We talk about uh, you know the the uh, soccer team with new sectional as well. But the the big news, obviously, we haven't really brought up yet. Uh, boy, a lot of new teams, new arrangements for the uh, conferences as well that we've got to talk about here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's worth mentioning Rochester will not play Northwestern this year. They will play them next year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, nor yeah, that's on top of everything else. Northwestern yeah. in the conference in place of uh, North Miami, who uh, has moved to the H and Yeah. And then of course, you know, Lewis Cass had joined the uh, the conference last year in place of Tippecanoe Valley. So, 
couple of uh, new teams uh, in the TRC. So mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be an interesting dynamic. Northwestern, uh, you know, they bring a lot of uh, really good athletic programs to the uh, conference. Yeah, football-wise, they've been kind of a little bit below 500. Yeah. Over the last about decade or so. Uh, I think they also have a new coach this year. Yes, they do. And, uh, it's one of four new coaches in the TRC. Uh, coach Fenters is new, Mike Fenters is the new coach at McConaughey. Uh, new coach at Southwood, Thomas Tyree. He, he was an assistant coach at Fort Wayne Northside. And then a new coach at Manchester with Coach Enyard taking over. He had been at Northfield, so he kind of moves down the road to Manchester. Okay. Replacing Eddie Field. So, again, uh, Rochester second place in the conference last year. Peru graduates Matt Retger and Ross. Ross. But Rochester graduates Deming and Brady Beck, so will those two teams be at the top, or will some other teams kind of rise up and ch challenge the Tigers and the Zebras this year? Yeah. Uh, but uh, right now Rochester has four two-way linemen and Xavier Vance, uh, Mason Heisey, Callum Faverda, and uh, Grant Clark. We're going to see Grant play tight end and defensive end. We're going to see Mason Heisey play guard and defensive end. And we're going to see Callum Faverda and Xavier Vance both play defensive tackle in addition to the offensive line spots. Uh, the, Coach uh, Schaefer, he didn't, he didn't name names. He said he's hoping to get some guys back from injury. He really wants to build that depth on the line because playing four guys on the line both ways, yeah. especially in 80-degree weather yeah. the first month of the season, that can that can wear on you. And and so that's something that we're going to have to keep an eye on, that he's definitely keeping an eye on, and we're going to have to keep an eye on as well. Yeah, and, uh, you know, get a good look at them tonight as they're at home scrimmaging against Winnemac before uh, the opener next week as Wabash comes to town. You know, that's... It's always an interesting, you know, first game with Wabash because yeah. they just play, you know, I assume they're going to keep playing that same style and it's kind of a run and yeah. shoot kind of an offense. Yeah, yeah. it was interesting because um, Ron Schaefer, he thinks that the spread is kind of, team might be getting, the spread has been kind of a predominant offense in the TRC. Rochester's one of the few teams that doesn't run a spread. Right, right. And uh, he thinks that maybe teams are going to start going away from that a little more. He thinks maybe teams are going to go back to the option a little bit. Yeah, yeah, McConaughey probably will stick with it at least oh, one, uh, for a year. Stick with yeah. The, yeah, they're going to stick with the spread though. Well, they got when well, they got Fuddy, I think they're going to stick with and, it and, and Kelly and Kelly. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I could see. You know, I think Manchester has kind of indicated that they're probably going to maybe go to a little bit more of an option type of an offense. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be interesting. And then we don't know a whole lot about what uh, we'll, we'll run into. Uh, we won't run into them with Rochester, but Northwestern. You know, what kind of style do they play? And, yeah. They're up at Pioneer tonight for their uh, scrimmage. Right. So. Right. All right. So anything else on Rochester you want to talk about? That's all I have for right now. Okay. So we're going to take another quick break here and come back, and we'll talk some more sports with Al here in just a moment. 4C Health is a community mental health center that serves 14 counties in north central Indiana, including Fulton County. We offer an expansive list of behavioral health and crisis care services to best fit your needs. We strive to give you the best care that is compassionate, collaborative, and competent. Whatever you are going through, you're not alone, and we are here to help. Check out our website at 4chealthin.org to learn more or call us at 1-800-552-3106. Mike's Trash is your local provider for a variety of trash removal and dumpster services to Rochester and the surrounding areas. From residential to commercial, and even for seasonal lake residents, Mike's Trash's reliable staff can help you find the right fit for your trash removal needs. To find a list of our services, visit us online at www.mikestrashllc.com, in-store at 824 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-6429. We started looking at California, Nevada, Oregon, Colorado, Exactly. And we simply could not find yes. anything okay. that was affordable that had a campus like this. Mm -hmm. We think of it as we're giving up our community, our home, and you're not. I always <laughs> wanted to come here after retirement, and now I have my twin and his wife and my cousins around me, and it's just wonderful. There are some things in life you just can't plan for. But here at Evans Agency, we strive to help you have all your bases covered when it comes to protecting your assets from whatever life throws your way. Whether it's home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency has got you covered. 
With a heart and hand for friendship, Evans Agency has been serving the community for 20 years. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Welcome back here talking sports with Val and talked about some of the conference changes. Typical New Valley Val has uh, a conference this year. They had a, uh, a year in the desert, I guess you could yeah. say, with the uh, being independent last year, but the Indiana Northern State Conference kicks off uh, play this year. And, and oh my goodness, what a football conference is going to be yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. You know, they're, they're talking about Knox. I mean, it, I think to to say they're going to win state in 3A is going to be a, a tough task, but boy, they made it all the way to semi-state last year. They're going to be a tough one. You know, Jimtown is always tough. Glenn seems to be uh, really putting things together over there. Yeah, new, new, um, and coach and, and, new coach and Ron Brown was very successful at his previous stop at Triton. Yeah, Bremen uh, seems to be in pretty good shape as well. But oh, that, Tippecanoe the, Valley. The quarterback there, Ladig, and the wide receiver, Graverson. Yeah. Yeah. Tippecanoe Valley, though, they're going to have uh, they're gonna have their say in this, uh, you know. And uh, they've got a four-and-a-half star kicker. They do have a four-and-a-half star kicker. Gage Overby got uh, bumped up to four-and-a-half stars, but... Looks like he's going to be doing some other duties on Friday nights, too. Yeah, uh, there are eight seniors on this team. Uh, Brandon Stiles, Wyatt Hart, uh, Colton Crabb, Matthew Owens, Brock Durf, Asher McGriff, Nash Miller, and Connor Fountain. Uh, that's a pretty low number for Valley, just eight. Mm-hmm. And then just 52 kids total. I think it's a little bit down from last year. I think around 58, 59 last year, but still 52. They're going to be, especially young, I think, the wide receiver and defensive back spots. We saw Wes Parker. He's probably the most experienced guy coming back, and he's just a junior. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to see a lot of guys this year who can who can step up, especially at, uh, both wide receiver and at, on the secondary, in stopping the pass. Because again, you lose a guy like Wade Jones, who played in, it was a safety who played in the North South All Star game. That is, yeah, he some, is going to be tough to replace. Some generational type talent graduating for them last year yeah. in uh, Parker and uh, Wade Jones. Yeah, you know Owen Omandi is a kid who's a sophomore. Boy, is he athletic though! Mm-hmm. And you know they're they're going to try to find ways to get Wes and Owen the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe as a wing back, maybe in the slot, maybe as a wide out. Uh, you're going to have to, you know, if you're an opponent, you're going to have to keep your eye on where those guys are at at all times. Uh, offensive, the offensive and defensive lines are going to be bigger in terms of size. Uh, but you know, talking with Coach uh, Stephen Moriarty, he's talking a lot about you know how quickly can they get off the ball, and he's talked a lot about we got to get we got to be low. Because the, a lot of these linemen are 6'3", 6'4", 6'3", 6'4", 270. Good size, but you got to get low right. to execute your blocks. And that's something that they've been that he's been talking, that they've been stressing a lot of at practice. We mentioned Gage Overby. He's not only going to be the kicker, he's going to be the punter. He's going to play right guard hmm. on offense. He's going to play defensive end. Hmm. So other than that, nothing. Yeah, <laughs> going on. Right. So Gage is going to be a busy dude. Uh, but again, he's you know he he's kicked some fifty plus yard field goals in the past. He goes to kicking camps, mm-hmm. so yeah, he's definitely gotten noticed. And yeah, four and a half star uh, kicker. Uh, the linebacking core, I think that's going to be one of the keys to this team with Brock Durf, Grady Moriarty, and Brandon Styles. I mean, they're that's a top notch linebacking crew. Yeah, and uh, you know Brock is a senior, Grady a junior, and Brandon a senior. Grady Moriarty is must watch TV. I yeah. mean, you just watch him and what he does in a game. I mean, he is a monster out there. Yeah, and we're going to see both Brock and Grady Moore in the in the offensive backfield this year. Grady's going to mm-hmm. have the ball in his hands. Yeah. Uh, some, you know, both Brock and Grady probably are fullbacks, but it's possible that Coach Moriarty can get them both in the game, maybe play Brock at fullback and try Grady at tailback. So uh, another graduation that uh, they had last year was Cody Eastgate. So mm-hmm. who's going to be under center for them? It's going to be a two-man battle. Um, Jameson Phillips is going to be one. He is a junior, and we saw him on the baseball field last year. He's got good speed. And then the other is sophomore Hunter Stage. And Coach Moriarty, Coach Moriarty has not made a decision yet. He's going to wait until after tonight's scrimmage against Fairfield before he makes it. Uh, Still up in the air yet. then. Still up okay. in the air. Yeah. Three straight home games for Valley to start the year, home with Wawasee, home with Rochester, and then home with Hammond Morton. In week three, Hammond Morton is a 5A team. I don't think Rod Valley has played a 5A team since they played Warsaw in 1999. Hmm. And that, did 5A even exist? Yeah, I guess 5A existed back yeah, then. 5A, yeah, 5A, they would have been the top top level. Yeah, game. but yeah, mm-hmm. so this, that's, a, that's, that's interesting. So three in a row at home and then four in a row on the road at uh, Knox, at LaVille, at Jimtown, at Western. Yeah. 
and three or all but one of those is a conference game. And all but one of those is a conference yeah. game, and then a home game with John Glenn. The John Glenn game is the only home conference game. The other four are on the road, and they finish mm-hmm. with a road game against Bremen in Week Nine. And what's interesting is everybody, the other four teams in the in the INSC will play non-conference games in Week Nine, except for Valley and Bremen, who will be playing each other. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, so uh, again, Valley is twenty-eight and four over the last three years. Mm-hmm. So again, it's a high standard to keep up. Uh, but again, you know, twenty-eight and one and against public schools and 0-3 against private schools. Well, there's only one private school team in their sectional. That's Fort Wayne Concordia, who went 0-10 last year. Yeah. But, again, that sectional is going to be tough. I mean, West Noble went – their only loss last year was to Knox in the mm-hmm. sectional. Yeah. And they lost 15-13 to to yeah. a good Knox – to a really good Knox team. Right, right. You know, um, Garrett, you know, well-coached team. Lakeland, improving. Uh, Woodland, great tradition. Angola, Coach Thomas there, we know him really well. Um, mm-hmm. Had a kind of a down year last year. He doesn't stay down for very long. So it's going to be an, an, an interesting to see how this Valley team improves and how they stack up against these other teams. This Valley team might be kind of a late-blooming team. Who? Yeah, yeah. But you don't have to look at that first game of sectional and say, i got to go to uh, Bishop Chittard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you'll you'll take going to West Noble over uh, Bishop Chittard probably nine times out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> Even if uh, West Noble is a very good team, yeah, yeah, only four private school teams in the entire 3A North, mm-hmm. and one of them is Hammond Knoll, who hasn't had a winning record in over a decade and won only two games last year. Uh, Mishawaka Marion, Fort Wayne Lures, and Fort Wayne Concordia are the other three. Of course, yeah. Lures won state in 2A last year. They're up to 3A this year. Yeah, if you're asking where Chittard doing it, they are actually in 4A and probably going to be number ranked number one in that class yeah. as well. I right, mean, they were. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're so that good. They're that good. Yeah, yeah. Garen Catholic is. It, they're still in three A, but they're in the south. They got moved to the south. They're in sectional twenty nine, which is the south semi state. Wow. Uh, Hamilton Heights is also in the south, believe it or not. Yeah. Mm. So that's what's going on with Valley football. It's going to be a very, uh, again, Coach Moriarty. The, the the consistency they build in this and excellence they build in the program is going to be really interesting. And I, the Bell game is going to be very, I'm very curious to see what that Bell game looks like, especially with both teams kind of bringing in new guys. Yeah, um, at Valley this year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, by the way, new scoreboard and new goalposts at Valley and a new, supposedly a new playing surface. Mm-hmm. So they mm-hmm. put a new grass along with a new weight room and a new uh, football-only locker room. Yeah. Girls golf. Um, wanted to give a shout-out to Savannah Miller. She shot a 37 last night in a 2-11, 2-25 win over Northfield. So... Mm-hmm. Savannah is really the standout number one uh, player for Coach uh, Royette and her squad there. So, any, any relation to a former golfer from Tippecanoe Valley? I'll have to do some research. Not, yeah. not Greg. Not, not, no. not related to Greg. No, not related okay, to Greg. I didn't I know. I don't believe. Okay. Uh, boys tennis. We mentioned they are at Marion tomorrow to start their season. They host Wawasee on Monday. Then they will be at Rochester on Tuesday. That's a, again, that's a change. They're traveling to Rochester. And then at North Judson on Thursday, uh, our RTC Player of the Year last year was Cameron Manuel. He's graduated, but basically everybody else is back. Tristan Reagan's back. DeAndre Hamilton's back. Ian Cooksey's back. And, you know, Coach Thad Milan is back. And, I, boy, he had a, I think he had a big impact on those kids last yeah. year. So mm-hmm. I'm really curious to see what Valley looks like. That's going to be a really good match when they play Rochester on Tuesday. And then they're at North Judson on Thursday. And the good news is that everybody in the INSC has a boys' tennis team. Good. So I did a little, did a little research. Yeah, Laville, Jimtown, Knox, they all, they all have teams. Yeah. Okay. Um, cross country, new coach Eric Hudson is taking over for Mike uh, Inglehern, who has uh, stepped down. Obviously, kind of a, a new year with Chesney Miller having with Queen mm-hmm. Chesney yeah, having graduated. Say, don't don't get it wrong. She was also the queen of the cross country course. Yes. I mean, having made state last year. But again, Bailey Buster, she was a regional qualifier last year. She had a great year last year. She'll be back. On the boys' side, Chris Marquez, he, he was a regional qualifier, and Chris will be back as well. Um, both of those kids have great years. It'll be interesting to see what the number situation is like at Valley. Uh, girls' soccer, Coach Trisha Setterholm and uh, her husband, Craig, back for their, uh, another year. Uh, three seniors and Evie Ramirez, Emma Craig, and Jetta Hughes. That's what we expect. Season starts on Monday with a home game against a very good Culver Lady Cavalier team. Okay. And then uh, another game against Wabash on Thursday. Again, Valley is in 2A. They're in the same sectional with Northwood. Northwood is ranked number 14 in the state. Okay. And the sectional's at Northwood. Okay. Ooh. So, again, Valley, again, this is uh, the, I want to say, the fifth year of the, fourth or fifth year of the program. So 
still kind of in its infancy. Mm -hmm. Boys soccer, they are at Central Noble on Thursday to start the uh, season. Uh, they graduated Carson Kraft, Kynan Cords, Eric Eikenberry, and Gio Arriaga. Of course, Gio was our RTC player of the mm -hmm. year last year. Uh, we, we don't know much about the new coach there, so uh, we'll, we'll tell you about the new coach once we learn more about him, like who he is. Uh, <laughs> Volleyball, uh, Valley Volleyball, um, they start their season with a road match at Wawasee on Tuesday. That's that's always a tongue twister, Val talking Valley Volleyball. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, uh, and then a home match with Plymouth on Wednesday. Of course, Coach Hutton used to be the coach at Plymouth. Uh, this is a pretty experienced team with five seniors. At least we've talked about this group for really four years now. They've all mm -hmm. basically played four years of varsity. Elise Smith, Avery Wagner, Haley Durkis, Michaela. Well, of course, Haley was a move in from Rochester. In her second year, they but McKaylee Costello and Emma Patrick, Avery McKaylee and Emma. I mean, they are they played a lot of volleyball together. I'm really curious to see how they do. But obviously, they're, they're going to miss uh, Ava Egolf, who graduated, and Erica Henderson was such an underrated libero, mm -hmm. and we're they're really going to miss her. But again, Coach Hutton does such a good job. We expect nothing but an excellent team from Valley every year. Yeah, but she, a, new, a new sectional though. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, curious to see how that works out. So how do you think the conference, uh, we talked obviously a lot about the conference for football, but how do you think that conference for volleyball is going to shape up? I think it's going to be wide open. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jimtown has been... They've had some teams, they've but had some they've teams, also but not, had some times. But that, not, yeah. yeah, and not lately, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, LaVille has struggled. Uh, Knox has had some good years in the past, but... They've kind of struggled a little, they, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Bremen has had their moments, right? Bremen, you know, yeah, they've had their moments. Again, they they've had a, t you know, they they've been in the in the NIC, which is tough. But yeah. uh, I'm sure they're they're happy to move out. And then John Glenn is, they're another school. They've had their moments at times, but they've yeah. they've also struggled at times. So I think yeah. it's gonna be a wide open conference. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see. And uh, they they just gonna play each other once with the 16 conference. I believe they're going to play each other twice. They I think are it's going to be a double round twice. robin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was and, wondering since it's such a small conference yeah. if they would. And then the sectional, Northwoods in the sectional, and that's kind of the team you look for just about every year. Yeah. Uh, Coach uh, Ladig, I believe, is her name, and she does an outstanding job there. Yeah. And they've got height on top of height on top of height. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Even uh, even their small kids are they're bigger than right. Most. Claire, Claire Payne, I believe, is her name, mm -hmm. and she is an outstanding volleyball player. Yeah. She's a very good basketball player, too, but right. she's a really good volleyball player. Right. Yeah, it's going to be curious to see what that Indiana Northern State Conference looks like on the uh, volleyball court. Yeah. So yeah. we'll be keeping an eye out for that as well. Yeah, so. they had their scrimmage last night against at Culver. Okay. Yeah, well, we're going to talk about them, too. That should be uh, an interesting season yeah. there. So. Yeah. All right, let's take another quick break here. We come back, we'll talk some more sports with Val. Spray foam is not only going to seal up the structure, but it's doing that insulation at the same time. So with a seamless application with the spray foam, you get all of that. You get your air barrier, you get your insulation, and obviously with, with one of the products, you get a vapor barrier as well. Hi, I'm Ashley Samsel with the Insulation Guys. And I'm Kyle Hoover. Let us be your solution to modern energy efficiency. Pace Setters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're buying or selling and your listing is commercial, residential, or investment, our agents are able to show any type of real estate that is active on the market. Visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net or call now at 574-223-5000. Steve Moore Agency is now offering an app to make viewing your policies, make payments, and file claims so much easier and convenient. You can download Steve Moore's Insurance Agent app from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Just search up Insurance Agent and look for the blue app with the large eye. If you want to know more about our services, you can call us at 574-223-3010 or visit us online at stevemoreagency.com. Harley-Davidson of Kokomo is your destination for everything Harley. We carry a complete line of motorcycles, including the new 2024 models. We also offer a full parts department and a service department specializing in customizing, high performance, and routine maintenance. 
and our motor clothes department carries the latest in genuine Harley-Davidson casual and riding apparel to keep you styling no matter where the road takes you. Call us today at 765-864-9999 or visit us online at hdkokomo.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. Uh, let's talk a little cast and comments football here, Val. We talked about the conference changes, and I'm sure there's probably a lot of people in the Hoosier North Conference that are glad that uh, Knox and LaVille aren't in there anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Coach Ulrich from Caston is one of those that is ecstatic because he's got yeah. a, a really good young team that has been kind of getting throttled by Knox and LaVille. Of course, who hasn't in the conference? Right. But um, you know, you take those yeah. two out and you add South Central for football and you add North Miami for football. All of a sudden, it looks like a pretty level, pretty even size-wise. I mean, right. it's entirely a one A conference now yeah, for football. Yeah, and Winnemac's the largest school with 360 for enrollment. Mm-hmm. So again, that's uh, you know, and I, yeah, I, I talked with Chris Ulrich earlier in the week. He talked about that. Yeah, we just we just did not match up very well against Knox and Laville, and that's not a lot of teams in the conference right, did. Right. I'm so, just, uh, I, just talking with some just conference coaches in general this week, that it's going to be you know competitive games week in and week out. How you pull out those games in the fourth quarter are going to be yeah. deter- key in determining who wins the conference. Obviously, the key with this cast of teams, 16 freshmen have come out for football. Yeah, that's, and, that's amazing. I mean, a few years ago, they didn't even have 16 kids on the team. Right. Now they got 16 freshmen. Yeah, so that's it's really exciting. And, of course, these kids have won mm-hmm. at the middle school level. Right. So, And on to- that's on top of last year's freshman group who are now sophomores. So yeah. this is going to be a young team. Uh, the keys to this team are going to be kids like Gavin Mollenkoff, who is going to uh, going to be the quarterback? But I, talking with Coach Ulrich, he said we're going to do a little more single wing this year. So it sounds like a lot of guys might be throwing the ball, and a lot of guys might be carrying the ball. Yeah. And I think he's he's really trying to develop an offensive system to get all of. He's got a lot of guys with speed. Get have all of them get a chance to touch the ball a little mm-hmm. bit to to make your defense kind of do some guess and do some misdirection and you know who's got the ball and you know if you can get a guy going in the other you know on a misdirection play you can. Spring some big plays, so we'll see how. They, again, Coach Ma, again, Coach Ulrich is you know he's essentially a, a wing T type coach. I'm sure they'll do with some of that, but also some single wing. Again, we'll see Gavin Mollenkopf. Gavin's a junior now. Again, we talked last year about in baseball how much bigger and stronger he's gotten. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's going to be a big factor. Jay, and he's got a he's got a brother who's a freshman. Mm-hmm. He's going to be on the team. Jabez Yarber um, going to be a key. Gage Manier and Ashton Boyer, two sophomores who. You know they really stepped up last year. They you know, they won that sectional game at North White, and both of those guys played big roles. And boy, Brody Brewer is a kid who, you know, he's just a sophomore, but he plays center and he plays on the defensive line. He's kind of the anchor of that line already as a sophomore. Again, they're going to miss a kid like Pete Duvall who is big on the line, but uh, yeah, again, it's our man Pete. Yeah, but they've got some young linemen who I think they're pretty excited about as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but again, when you when you start freshman on the line, it's kind of Okay, how do they compete against this mm-hmm, mm-hmm. schedule? But again, without Knox and Laville, and again, you know, we'll, it'll be curious. But again, your first game next Friday, and you get sent on a bus to Carroll. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Because Carroll has won three consecutive sectional titles. Yeah. Uh, Carroll's only loss last year was in the, uh, I believe it was to uh, Adams Central in the regional. Yeah. I think they had some pretty heavy graduations last year, though, didn't they? Lost 18 to graduation. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, uh, they they've got one of those programs that can reload pretty quick. Yeah, but you still you yeah. lose eighteen. <laughs> don't yeah, don't feel too sorry for no, them. No, no. The, the, the Viney kid who was they're really good and the Chambers kid. Yeah. They both graduated, but still, I mean, uh, one A North is wide open now too because Adam Central and the Indianapolis Lutheran have both moved up to two uh, A. Right, so right. The the two preeminent uh, teams that would uh, end up in Lucas Oil. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Sheridan is in the south. I don't know what kind of team Bud Wright has, but you always keep an eye on them. They got moved to the south. I believe they're in the south. Yeah. Wow. So the, yeah, the well, south part of Indiana is moving north. <laughs> right. Yeah. Huh. So uh, yeah. So again, but again, that it's it's worth playing Carroll to start your season because they're in your sectional mm-hmm. at the end of it, and cast the second game is against North White, and they're in their sectional as well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that's what. I'm 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 curious to see uh, if this casting team and do, will they have big play potential? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I think, for I, think them. With, I think with Boyer and Manier, yeah. they have. I, th- I think they they might have that. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for them. I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing, and I think the new uh, conference alignment is going to just help them just that much more. Yeah, even absolutely. as a young team. So yeah. 
volleyball wise boy uh, talk about uh, rebuild they have uh, got some big shoes to fill in that volleyball yeah, program yeah absolutely uh, three three seniors on this year's team with Carly Summers and Shaylee Yeda and, and McKenna Milton. Like this, that's what we think are the seniors. We think uh, maybe Katie Hutzel might be a fourth senior, uh, but she hasn't played varsity before, so we'll see about her. Uh, but they, you know, they they won the Cass County invite last year. That was, um, you know, when they beat Pioneer in the championship match. We'll see. Uh, this year's Cass County invite is at Lewis Cass, so we'll see kind of that as a measuring stick. And Cass plays Pioneer in the first match mm-hmm. at Cass County invite, and both of those teams are really young, so it's mm-hmm. going to be kind of an interesting battle between those teams. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Just think, uh, uh, you know, when you start talking girls at uh, Caston, you know, we've we've talked about that group that graduated so much over the years, even when they were in junior high, and to think that they're gone now, it's yeah. just. It's crazy, but uh, yeah, we're, it's the way it goes. They've all moved on, and uh, now Kasten has to uh, rebuild it. Uh, I assume Coach Hurlmeyer is still in yeah, doing the uh, volleyball? Her, I think, believe her third season now. Yeah. Yeah, her third yeah. season as the coach. Yeah. Uh, they host Carroll, and they have their home opener on Tuesday against Carroll of Flora, and then right in, a TRC, or right in a Hoosier North play as they travel to Culver on Thursday. And, of course, Culver gave Kasten everything they could handle when they met at Kasten last year. Now they got to make the trip over. Yeah, and this Culver's year, got a lot of pieces coming back. And it's a Culver team that has five seniors on it. Yeah. And five seniors have played a lot yeah. of volleyball. Right. And then uh, the Tomahawk invite is next Saturday. So yeah. the Caston's in that as well. But um, otherwise, kind of a, just a lot of new kids and new roles. Yeah. Now, a program that may not like the uh, new conference alignment as much at Caston was going to be the boys' soccer team because yeah. now they're going to have to deal with a uh, new opponent in the conference of Argus. Yeah, there's going to be a team that might be wanting to <laughs> drag it, that might be dragging them down, yeah, yeah. so to speak. But uh, home game against, Mc- they had their scrimmage last night against mm-hmm. uh, Carroll. Regular season starts on Monday with a home game against McConaughey. That's always a tough opponent. Mm-hmm. You know, they got a ton of speed. And then at Rochester on Thursday, we talked about the Zebras. We think they're going to be pretty improved. And then, yeah, and then a home game with, then Argus comes to town uh, next Saturday for their first conference game. Yeah. Yeah, they, I typically uh, they don't play during the regular season. I know they've met several times in the uh, sectional, but they haven't played in the regular season. Yeah, this, they? yeah, this is the first time I think they've yeah. ever played in the regular season. Yeah, and that's an Argus team that's uh, you know won two straight sectionals. It brings a lot back from last year. Yeah, uh, cross country uh, cross country team starts their season with the Warsaw invite on Saturday. They'll be at Warsaw. I th- I really like this cast and girls cross country team. When you talk about Lao, uh, Hernandez Rios, Jada Aguilar. Uh, got a lot of girls back from last year who've had a history of success, and they were all they were just sophomores last year. So they've got them. Coach Zimmerman has them for two more years. Boys, boys cross country is a little, um, a little more. We don't quite know what they have mm-hmm. only because uh, Edison Byram was such a big part of right, that team, and Edison's right. graduating. Edison was a regional qualifier. Yeah, last it was year. Edison and everybody else with that yeah. team, honestly. And yeah. Yeah. So he's moved on, and right. But they have their usual uh, retreat at Brown County this summer. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the impressive part I always think about that uh, retreat is I think the coaches probably run almost as much as the uh, the runners yeah. do. Yeah, even Coach, Coach Summers goes Coach down Summers, there. Coach Summers, yeah, he keeps in shape with yeah. it. And, of course, Blair does as well. So, Yeah, um, uh, girls golf. Uh, we haven't gotten any girls re- golf results yet. They've got a home match with Triton and Manchester coming up on Tuesday and a home match with Tri-County coming up on Thursday. They only had three players last year. Hopefully, the, the numbers are up this year for Coach Phelps, who's just a super nice guy. But yeah, uh, let's move down the uh, highway a little bit to uh, Royal Center. Let's talk a little bit about the Pioneer Panthers. Football kind of had a little bit of a resurgence uh, after a couple of uh, rebuilding mm-hmm. years last year. Had a young squad last year, but they also had a veteran squad, so they've got some big yeah. holes to fill. Obviously, Ryland Toloza graduates. Uh, Caden Hill graduates. You know that's two pretty big pieces there in the backfield for yeah. uh, Coach Barry. And still, I think they only had four seniors last year. They only have four seniors this year: and Luke Ollery, Eli Nickel, Jorge Martinez, and Fletcher Smith. Um, but I think the key is going to be, uh, and and I, I kind of asked this with Coach Barry when I talked with him earlier this week: is kind of when it's third and one or fourth and one, who's going to get the ball? Mm-hmm. And it looks like Noah Van Meter is going to be the guy. Okay. Noah was a kid who he started out as a guard. And moved to tight end. Now he's a fullback, mm-hmm. and he's going to take over for Toloza. So we'll see how well he does back there. And of course, another guy who might get the ball in third and short and fourth and short is the quarterback, Micah Rands, right, right. who's back. And it's good to see Micah back healthy. He had a really good golf season 
So uh, very, really good athlete. Yeah, he was dinged up a uh, mm-hmm. good chunk of the season last year, but yeah. still played really well. So yeah. it'd be good to see him come back uh, mm-hmm. junior this year. Is that right? Yeah, Mike yeah. is a junior, and Eli Guffey is also a junior. It's going to be interesting to see if he gets the ball in his hands a lot as well. Yeah, Eli is tough as nails, and he is going to be a key uh, both as a, as a, on the offense and on the defensive side. He's one of the better linebackers. Uh, in the area. I'm sure Pioneer not going to be too upset about the new conference as well with not having to worry about Knox and LaVille. Yeah. Um, you know, other key players include line, linemen like Brady Price, Makeda Tolosa, and Tyler Schnurple. And Shiloh Ryan is a sophomore who has got a lot of potential as yeah, well. We, we talked about him a lot last year on the basketball court. Yeah. yeah. But, again, you know, talking with Coach uh, Barry about the defense last year, he goes, a lot of times, you know, we're playing Knox, we're playing LaVille, we've got kids in the right spot. But they just didn't make the play, and a lot of that is just you need another year in the weight. We were just young, and we just needed another year in the weight room. So it's going to mm-hmm. be interesting to see uh, how they evolve. But boy, non-conference wise, and this is this is how you got to do it if you're pioneer and you're in a one A conference. Well, your, your first two games at Lewis Cass, a two A, at Knox, a three A, mm-hmm. and Knox will be probably top ten in three A. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that'll, that'll be an interesting start to the season. Still playing Knox, just not playing him as a conference opponent this year. So Yeah, and, and by the way, Week 9, North Judson comes to Royal Center oof. in Week 9. Yeah. Now, they're not in the sectional with North Judson anymore. Yeah. But that, that could be, but still, that game could have cu- huge conference implications. Mm-hmm. And then Pioneer is in that same sectional with Caston at sectional 42. So, again, they could have to run into Carroll at some point. Yeah. Yeah, it's a completely different section alignment for uh, for Pioneer. So, mm-hmm. uh, and talk about a team. You know, we talked about Caston volleyball having a uh, a lot of seniors to replace the uh, oh, yeah. Pioneer volleyball team. And we're going to miss the Pioneer volleyball senior girls. Man, we we just love watching them play. We made it all the way to the semi state last year yeah. with this group. They, uh, they graduate Mackenzie Rogers, and they graduate Brooklyn Borges, and they graduate Elizabeth Rance, and they graduate Kylie Attinger. And man, they, they, they graduate. They graduate Blair Grigsby, and they graduate uh, Brooklyn Borges. Brooklyn, yeah, <laughs> and uh, Brooklyn playing and at Ad, and, Christian. And Eddie Kripe was yeah. an absolutely tremendous libero for that team, and they graduate yeah. all of them. Yeah, all at the same time. And yeah. Kirsten Nyes is the only senior left, so yeah. this is her team, and I'm really curious to see how she does. Uh, but you talk about other, you know, there are two there are juniors, uh, Ava Bc and Aspen Molinar are going to be the other two juniors on the team. And then four sophomores and ten freshmen. Yeah, for Coach Nye. So yeah, it'll be uh, be interesting. We'll see them right away. They'll be here on Tuesday taking on the Rochester Zebras. And yeah, you know Rochester's going to be hungry to get a win against Pioneer. And uh, you know you got a team in Rochester that's uh, coming off of a, a good end of their season. That's really uh, got everybody back against a team in Pioneer that's coming off of. Uh, a really good season and, and is going to be relearning a few things with a, a lot of new players. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you talk about uh, you know missing a big senior that graduated uh, the cross country team, obviously with uh, um, Violet Montgomery graduating. You know they're they're going to have to replace her on the on the girls side. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, love what a, what a group run. of boys that graduated for them as well. Right. You know, Carson, Carson Meyer yeah. and. Uh, Jackson Baker. Yeah. I was trying to think. Leighton Dot is a senior this year, so mm-hmm. uh, trying to think who graduated there. But yeah, still th- um, three senior girls in Kylie Jamerson, Leyland Malco, and Allison Martinez Domingo, and two senior boys. We know about Leighton Dot. Kayla Bowler is the other senior boy on that Pioneer boys cross country team. But again, Leighton coming off a state finals appearance last year. Uh, curious to see how he does. He's an outstanding runner, uh, mm-hmm. one of the elite runners in our area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, me and McKay kind of leading the way with the girls' golf uh, early in the season. Uh, yeah, just a junior for the just a junior yeah. shot a 41 last night in a, in a match they lost to Clinton Central. She already shot a 38, which broke the school record for nine holes. So he had a great year last year. She was a regional qualifier, and she's going to be one of the top golfers in our area again this year. Yeah. So, but uh, Bre- yeah, Brenner McLean, the only senior on the Pioneer golf team. Okay. All right, we're going to take another quick break here. We'll come back. We'll talk some more sports with Val. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Perkins & Adley LLP, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trust to appeals and guardianships, Perkins & Adley has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. 
See a full list of services online at PerkinsAdley.com. Rochester Ford is your go-to for quality vehicles and automotive repairs. With our vast selection of vehicles to choose from, we're sure to put you behind the wheel of your dream car without compromising your bank account. And with every vehicle we sell, we offer a free lifetime oil change policy to be sure that your ride stays in tip-top shape even after you leave our lot. Come see us today at 119th East 4th Street, Rochester, or visit us online at rochesterfordonline.com. Fulton County REMC is proud to be offering great opportunities and programs for our youth in the upcoming year. These programs prioritize balancing fun with education, all in one unforgettable adventure. Right now, admissions are open for Camp Kilowatt for any youth currently in 6th grade, and for the youth tour for any current junior year high schooler. To learn more about these trips, visit fcremc.coop and check out our youth page, or call us at 574-223-3156. New Holland Rochester knows that farmers need equipment they can trust and rely on. That's why for over 125 years, New Holland has been innovating to develop the best and most sustainable products available for our customers. Check out our full fleet that includes our lineup of small compact tractors online at www.NewHollandRochester.com or stop in at one of our locations in Rochester or Logansport to see how we can serve you. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. And a Friday afternoon, we are one week away from the start of football season. Hard to believe we're going to get some volleyball coverage for you next week. We've got uh, we've got some soccer on the uh, schedule as well. I can't remember if that was next Thursday with uh, Rochester and Caston. Um, mm -hmm. Got that on the uh, schedule for uh, coverage next week. So going to get back into the swing of thing with with some uh some sports on rtc4.com let's uh let's talk argus uh dragons as they are now part of the hoosier north athletic conference big change for them obviously they're going to be playing some teams in uh conference play that they obviously haven't been um did i see something about the boys also doing nsc conference did, did did I read that right, or was mm -hmm. that is that is that wrong? Because they're playing a lot of the NSC, the INSC teams, and then I saw a INSC tournament scheduled on Argus's schedule. Did you see that? I'll have to look into it. I okay. didn't see, I didn't see that. Okay, yeah. I, I saw that on their schedule. It was really weird. Okay. But let's talk girls yeah, first. For, well, the girls, obviously, the, the big story is the new coach Ty Adley taking over for Joe Stone. I mean, mm -hmm. that's going to be a Again, uh, and Ty, you know, he's been, you know, a protege under Coach Stone. So we'll see how much of a change this is. But it's also going to be as weird it is, as it will be to not to see Joe Stone on the sidelines. It's going to be weird not to see the Lily Hines on the right, field. Right. And that is going to be an interesting team, an interesting thing to see. But, again, the, the preseason, the coaches, they really like this Argus team. If you told me that the that of the girls team or the boys team that one would be ranked and one wouldn't i would say oh the boys team will be ranked and the girls right, team won't right notice the girls team was ranked they're ranked number 13 yeah and it's the boys team was unranked and the girls team they get they get right to it hosting trinity greenlawn who's ranked number seven on tuesday hmm. <laughs> so welcome to the coaching profession coach adley yeah you're gonna find out uh, if that yeah. ranking is deserved right away <laughs> yeah by the way trinity greenlawn is number seven raymond is number nine Mm. They're in the same sectional, mm -hmm. but they're not in Argus's sectional. Right. So if Argus were to win their sectional, and one of those teams were to win their sectional, that's who Argus would play in the regional semifinals. So okay. again, it's not it's not a sectional preview anymore. Right. So that's the key. But again, that's a Trinity Greenlawn team that won the sectional last year. I think Bethany Christian is also in that sectional, wow. and they're in the top twenty. Wow. <laughs> with with Bremen and Trinity Greenlawn. So yeah. uh, again, our, you know, again in Argus, I think they they. Certainly, no complaints. I'm sure about how their sectional came out uh, and how the IHSA aligned them. And then again, after that home game with Trinity Greenland, and another home game against Plymouth on Thursday. Mm -hmm. and that's a Plymouth team that's been pesky uh, over the years. Three seniors on this Argus girls soccer team: Olivia Lead, Morgan Barkus, and Ava Stackhouse. Yeah. Uh, you know, you talk about the conference realignment. You you talk about a team just down the road that they normally don't play in in regular season play. That's going to be a big uh, hurdle for them in the conference. That's the Culver Cavaliers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know they're going to be a big one. Uh, North Miami. I don't know what they've got this year, but usually they they do pretty well in, yeah, in girls. Pretty strong teams. Yeah. 
just not a lot of uh, a lot of teams though in mm-hmm. the, in the conference on the girls side. You know, Pioneer does not have soccer. Winnemac does not have girls soccer. Caston doesn't have girls soccer. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a, a definitely a smaller mix of teams for them. But you you really you know Culver's going to be right there in that mix. Yeah, yeah. The boys uh, the boys side obviously the uh, the big thing for them starts off at the top. Todd Vanderwill still uh, still ticking. Yeah, saw him yeah. over the summer. He looked he, you know he looked like he he looked good and he looked in good spirits yeah. too. It was yeah. great to see we, him. We love Todd and uh-huh. you know it's, it's good to hear that he's doing well. Yeah, uh, and the big story is that. Boyd Paul is not the goalkeeper. The goal, or at least he's not listed as the goalkeeper. Angelo McMillan is listed as the goalkeeper. He's a freshman. Mm-hmm. He's the only one listed as a goalkeeper on the roster. So we'll see uh, how well he does and how long that holds up. But six seniors on the roster, including Elias Ricosi, Ethan Petz, Boyd Paul, Austin Owens, Luke Stoltz. Luke is going to, believe, miss the first couple games of the year due to his suspension. Uh, he got some got a red card in the uh, regional final last year against uh, Park Tudor. And then Ben Zahm, and of course Ben was just a huge part of that mm-hmm. team last year. Yeah. So this is a you know that's six veteran players who played a lot, and you know pretty experienced junior class as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, just really excited to see. And boy, the sophomores gained so much experience. You know, we, when you talk about kids like Makai Austin, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, how much how much progress they made. Mm-hmm. Again, start with a scrimmage on Saturday at Fort Wayne Dwinger, and then a really tough Plymouth team at Plymouth on Wednesday for their regular season opener. And that gets them ready for their conference opener at Caston next Saturday. Yeah. We yeah. talked about going there. Um, again, Argus won a regional at Caston what, a few years ago. Uh, we'll see how they do there. Uh, yeah, on the, on the boys' side, conference-wise, uh, you know, Caston, Winnemac, North Miami, you know, tends to have a decent team. Culver's been kind of, uh, you know, hurting for numbers over the yeah. last few years. Oregon Davis – uh, boys soccer, I think. I believe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Do they have a girls team? I don't. I believe they do. Do they have a girls one team? One of each, yeah. Okay. So you know we have that in the mix as well. South Central not in the mix in soccer. They are mm-hmm. only playing football in the conference. Right, right. So Oregon Davis and uh, North Miami and Argus, then the new teams in uh, soccer. Mm-hmm. Uh, volleyball has a new coach. New coach Beth Tinsman takes over as the new coach uh, for Andrea Perez. And I don't know much about her volleyball background. I'm going to get in touch with her soon. Only one senior on the team, Lexi Schenkel, is the only senior on the volleyball team. Of course, uh, Argus trying to win a match this year. They did win one last year, so yeah. Be be a little remiss too. We already kind of mentioned it, but uh, Damon Binkley, yeah. the new athletic director there, of course, of uh, Argus soccer fame, Grace College soccer fame, yeah. and. Uh, Back at uh, his alma mater and uh, leading the program with the in the athletic athletic director's yeah, office. Yeah, and he's going to teach science at the school. So kudos to Damon. That's a full plate to teach, uh, be a full time teacher and an AD. Yeah. And so good. You know, we wish him the best of luck. But boy, the leadership he showed with the soccer team last year in a time when they really needed him, that was so impressive. And uh, not that I've ever failed to be impressed by Damon as a person, or as, <laughs> right. a, as an athlete. Right. Right. So. Uh, Culver Cavaliers um, obviously, you know, suffered through a, a very difficult football season last year. What's the prediction for them coming up this year as they uh, move into uh, year two with Coach Faust? Well, numbers aren't great, only 25. I think Coach Faust would, would be the first to tell you, like, numbers would be a little bit higher than that. Uh, but I think there's, a, there's definitely been a commitment to the weight room. The, com- the weight room, they've really revamped that. And not only that, but they've added five weight classes during the school day. That's big. And Kyle Evans, believe it or not, the former boys basketball coach, still works at Culver teaching those weight classes as a yeah. PE teacher. Works at Culver and then heads up to Ancilla for uh, practice in the yeah. evenings, or yeah. will be. So I think there's there's definitely a strong um, commitment, a stronger commitment to the weight room. They're going to start off with two non-conference games, both at home, home with Attica, home with West Central. Mm-hmm. Chance, to, chance to get off to a good start. I think we'll find out a lot about uh, how good Culver is. Attica didn't win a game last year, and they've got a new coach. So mm-hmm. there's uh, certainly do you think the timing would be good to play Attica. Um, you know, we talked about Drew Bowers coming out for football at Rochester. David Height is kind of in a similar position of oh. Culver. He's come out for football. Okay. You've seen David on the soccer field before. But this is the first time playing football, and he's going to play a big role on this team. He's going to play, uh, I believe, some receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, some I think he's going to play the defensive secondary, mm-hmm. and I believe he might even do some kicking. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Ethan Binion going to be a big piece coming back for them. Yeah. Uh, 
in that backfield. Right. Again, you graduate Jack Rogers, and again, mm -hmm. I, I kind of had a similar question to for Austin Faust as I did for Adam Berry, which is when you need third and one, fourth and one, who do you give the ball to? Mm -hmm. And they got Ethan Benny, and they got Tony Summers too. Tony really had a nice year last year, just in kind of limited carries. He'll play a bigger role this year. Tony's a senior, you know. He's got good, he's got good quicks. I think he, he plays off Binion really well. So, mm -hmm. will be interesting to see how they do. Caden Herrera, Daniel Laba. We talked about Binion and Summers. Robert Evans is back playing football this year. He missed last year due to an injury. He, he's a senior this year on Logan Caudill. Mm -hmm. uh, Logan's going to be a big part of that offensive and defensive lines as a mm -hmm. senior. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but 25 boys and all. Uh, again. We, we talked about Jonas McEwen coming back. I talked about him with Coach Faust. He goes, a lot of it is, you know, the <sighs> developing that confidence because sometimes he didn't have time to throw, and sometimes when he did have time to throw, they didn't catch it mm -hmm. or they didn't get or they didn't even get open. Yeah. So hopefully that that because again, Coach Faust, I think, is at as hard as a spread coach, and we'll see how they we'll see how the the pieces kind of fit in terms of that spread. And watch out for that freshman wide receiver Braylon Jackson. I think he could play a big role as a right away as a freshman. Yeah, we've seen his brother a few times. We've seen his brother. We've seen his sister, too. Seen his yeah. sister, too, yeah. Volleyball team, boy, some uh, pretty big expectations, I would say, for this volleyball team with yeah. uh, Bryn Barrett and uh, Overmeyer and that whole group of seniors, and uh, they got some good younger players as well for yeah. Coach Barrett. Yeah, if you've been watching Culver Volleyball the last few years, these, these names should not be too unfamiliar. Bryn Barrett, Tyra King, Meredith Gordon, Libby Overmeyer, Ashley Pugh, those are the five seniors. They only list eight on the varsity. Coach Barron did not do a lot of subbing last year, so I, I think eight is probably what she's going to stick with. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if anybody might emerge from that, JV. They, they, you know, they travel to South Central for a tournament on Saturday. That'll be a good kind of measuring stick. And then, boom, right away in the conference play when they travel to OD on Tuesday night. Yeah. And then Kasten comes to town on Thursday. So two conference games basically within the first week of the season. You got to think about, you know, with where Caston is, with where Pioneer is, with uh, this conference. Boy, well, yeah, Culver I mean, should be right in that mix. Right. I mean, Triton graduated a lot too. Yeah. And, uh, Coach yeah. Clothaw does a great job there, but boy, they did graduate a lot. Yeah. Now, Triton's going to have a ton of height. I still believe, but still. Yeah. This might be, you know. You know, the, yeah. I mean, if if Culver from an experience standpoint, Culver doesn't have to take a back seat to anybody. Right. Right. So it should be interesting. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, and then a, a tournament at John Glenn next Saturday. Uh, girls soccer wise, again, um, boy, Giselle Villegas, we're gonna, she's just going to be missed terribly. Forty nine goals last year, she was our yeah. RTC Player of the Year. But again, with the, co the program that Coach AJ Nice has built, um, we, we expect another solid team. You know, seniors Maddie Hamilton, Brooklyn Lefebvre, Amaya Williams back, Katie Scouten back. Adam Marie's uh, Rojas Mendoza back. So, again, with Scout back, you know, you get an experienced keeper. Right. Maddie, really, really strong in that midfield area. And Amaya, really great on the defense. It's like they have, they have experience at every level of the field. Mm -hmm. But boy, their young players really stepped up last year as well. Yeah. They're at Tippecanoe Valley on Monday, uh, home with Peru on Wednesday, and then the open conference play next Saturday with a trip to North Miami. Yeah. That'll be a big one right out of the gate. Yeah, I really North yeah. Miami and Culver are going to be uh, yeah. right there with Argus, I think, mm -hmm. for that conference. Yeah. Boys soccer-wise, uh, Culver has a new coach. Mike Bushman takes over for Adam Neese. You know, Coach Bush, I, I don't know what his soccer credentials are, but I know he's been at Culver for a long time, Yeah, and he's highly wrestling. respected, yeah. and he's coached wrestling, and he's coached track, and he's done great at both of those sports. So we'll yeah. see how he does. At boys soccer, um, but I think it's going to help to have a coach in the building to help build up the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, again, because again the conference is only getting tougher with Argus now in there. Yeah. And again, they don't start their season until they take they travel to North Miami as part of a girls boys doubleheader next Saturday. Okay. Uh, cross country and girls golf they start uh, a week or two from now. Cross country I don't think cross country I think starts in September. Uh, girls golf starts later this month. So yeah. Okay. All right. Another quick break here. We'll come back and uh, talk some more sports with Val. Stop on into Giretti's Place for breakfast, lunch, or to get your day started with a cup of coffee from our signature coffee bar. Located at 701 Main Street, Giretti's Place is the perfect spot for a bite to eat in downtown Rochester. Come on by Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and on Saturday from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. To see a full menu, visit us at www.gerettysplace.com or call us at 574-223-7101. 
Thanks to the generous donors, the Fulton County Community Foundation has given over $19 million in grants and scholarships to our local communities. Grants received at the Community Foundation help families send their children to preschool, provide transportation, fund scholarships, local community events, and so much more. Call 574-223-2227 or visit NICF.org to see how your donation can benefit your community. Looking for a way to show off your students' art talents? Enter them in for Fulton County REMC's 2025 Cooperative Calendar of Student Art Contest. Any student from grades K through 12 can enter with an unlimited amount of submissions. Artwork can be submitted by parents, teachers, youth leaders, or other groups as a class project. Students do not have to be consumers of a rural electric cooperative. To learn more, visit www.fcremc.coop youth or call at 574-223-3156. Rochester Iron and Metal Incorporated is a full-service metal recycling and processing center. We pay cash for your scrap metal and work hard to make sure that every bit is recycled properly. Rochester Iron and Metal has been serving North Central Indiana for over 50 years, and we have dedicated ourselves to providing our customers with the best service, the best product, and the best prices anywhere. Stop on by at any of our 14 locations or visit us online at www.rochesteriron.com or call us at 574-223-4300 to learn more. Welcome back here, wrapping things up for a Friday afternoon, talking sports with Val. Let's talk a little Winnemac Warriors here, Val. Football team um, putting some things together here. What do we know about uh, what their expectations yeah, are here for um, the 24 season? 33 boys came out for football on Winnemac. That's probably a little low by Winnemac standards, but I think kind of that's kind of the trend with kind of low numbers throughout the area. 14 of the 33 are freshmen, so it's going to be a pretty young team. Uh, seniors include Addison Allen. Uh, Addison's a big play threat. We saw him on the football. Big, big strapping kid. You know, he's gonna. I imagine he's gonna have the ball in his hands a bit. Aiden Schooler, uh, Talon Garner is gonna play on, probably on both lines. We saw Talon. He's a really good athlete. And then uh, Reed Anderson is uh, another senior on their team. So, again, Winnipeg going down from 2A to 1A this year, but at the same time they're the largest school in the conference. So mm -hmm. we will see how they do. Uh, I'm really curious to see um, the quarterback situation, uh, how that worked. Max Gearhart saw a lot of that, a lot of time there uh, under center last year. He's graduated, so we'll see what their the quarterback uh, situation is going to look like and how that affects uh, kind of how they call how uh, uh, Coach Burt, the other co both Burgesses call plays. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, they all have some on the line as well. You know, you graduate a kid like Wyatt Wheeler, he'll he will be missed. Uh, Volleyball-wise, two seniors on the team for Coach Heather Caston. Those are Allie Campbell and Lindsay Walters. And Maggie Smith is the new assistant coach. No, not the Maggie Smith that just graduated. This <laughs> is the other Maggie Smith who is, I believe, the all-time Winnemac record holder in blocks. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, and of course, in basketball, she was the all-time leader in rebounds. But what a great hire. I mean, Maggie is a great person and a great athlete, and she is going to help out Coach Caston tremendously, and that is great that she's gotten into coaching. Not that old, though, because she was playing. There was two Maggie Smiths playing at one time, right? Right. She's 23. Yeah. Yeah. 20, yeah. 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 She probably just graduated college. and 23. Mm -hmm. She might not even be 23 yet. Yeah. Uh, Winnemac hosts their home invite on Saturday to start the season, then a home match with Lewis Cass on Tuesday, a home match with Rensselaer on Thursday, and then they travel to North Miami for that Tomahawk invite next Saturday. Um, and of course, Winnemac in basically that I think we talked about their volleyball sectional when the sectionals came out. Really, nobody with a great volleyball tra tradition in that sectional. Bremen, Jimtown, Knox, Laville. Somebody's going to win that South Bend Career Academy. Somebody's mm -hmm. going to win that. Who's mm -hmm. going to be? Yeah. Uh, we'll see how how much they've improved. But again, a pretty young team with only two seniors. Boys soccer, only two seniors on this team: uh, Logan Marlowe and Alex Haig. Um, and then uh, a new coach, Carlos Badayo, takes over for uh, Chad Burton. And, of course, they're not only going to be missing Chad Burton, but they're going to be missing his son, Connor Burton, who graduated. Mm -hmm. Connor, I think, scored like 70% of the team's goals last year. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how he develops um, some of the personnel there. Um, home game with Delphi on Monday. Travel to John Glenn Tuesday. And their first conference game at Oregon Davis on Thursday. Yeah. 
Again, that's, uh, you know, for the last few years, it's kind of been that cast and Winnemac game at the end of the year mm-hmm. to kind of determine who's the, the conference champion. And now you got Oregon Davis in the mix. And, of course, Argus. So You're right. it's going to be a, a lot different looking conference. And Winnemag knows how to deal with that because they've been in the sectional with Argus for a while, and they're still in the sectional with Argus. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll see how they compare. Cross country, again, boy, you miss the Maggie Smith, who's now at, running at the D1 level at Southern Indiana. Right. She graduated. But you still got three senior girls left in Claire Goodman, Cadence Hoover, and Mershai Lamer. Uh, and then um, four senior boys, Ryan Bedwell, Tay and Bell, Dylan Guilford, and Alex Haig, that am again, he's doing soccer and cross country. Hmm. So, again, uh, Mike, and, of course, the, the real story there, the new coach, Mike Haschel, when you talk about the greatest runners in Winnemac history, I think Mike Haschel is probably the first name that comes to people's mind. He went to state, ran collegiately, uh, great, great runner. And now taking over for Adam Bennett, who was there for, I think, almost 20 years. So we'll see how he does. But, again, uh, again the Winnemac has a great feeder system. You know, Jenny Belcher helps run the feeder system there. And they've, there's just been always a good run of runners there coming into the program. It's a veteran team, and we'll see how he does right away. Uh, girls golf, um, a bunch of seniors, and Maddie Foster, Sierra Haschel, Mershai Lamer, Kaylin O'Connor, uh, G.N. Peterson, and Emily Weaver. But the only one with our previous varsity experience is Sierra Haschel, and she's going to be playing number one. So, again, you, Bianca Huizar was such a great player, and she's going to do great things at Holy Cross. But again, she graduated. I mean, I mean, Bianca was this close to making state last year, so mm-hmm. she will be missed. And they graduate Maggie Smith as well. So it's going to be a little bit of a rebuilding year for Coach Jeremy Shell, but he does a great job with those kids, and uh, I expect him to continue there. And again, that'll be a wide open conference tournament when they get together at uh, Round Barn mm-hmm. in uh, uh, late September. Okay. Uh, home match with Knox on Monday. Home match with North Miami Tuesday, and then they travel to Rochester on Thursday. And of course. The Rochester's the big match because they're in the sectional with them. Yeah. And one last shout-out. Uh, Keaton Stasiak is the new girls ba- new girls basketball assistant coach mm-hmm. and JV coach at Winnemac. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so congrats to Keaton. It was just yesterday. It seemed like she was playing, and now she's gotten into coaching, and she will be fabulous there. Yeah. And she's a guidance counselor at the school, too. So congrats to Keaton. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up here for Talking Sports for today. Uh, we will be at Rochester on Tuesday for the volleyball, the first home match of the season for the Rochester Lady Zebras as they host the Pioneer Lady Panthers. And uh, we'll be back on uh, Thursday night over at uh, Blackadder uh, Memorial Sports Complex as the boys' soccer team host Caston. That's always a good early season mm-hmm. indicator for both squads to see where they're at. And, of course, uh, next Friday the uh, football team opens up at home against the Wabash Apaches. You've also got yeah. uh, Culver hosting Attica. Tippecanoe Valley is going to be hosting Wabash. Well, that'll, that'll, that'll test Cal Stone's royal loyalty right off the bat. Right. Playing Wabash in the season opener. Right, right. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the Winnemac will be hosting West Central. Those will be our home games that we'll have uh, on the air. So um, make sure you check it out, rtc4.com. Check out Val's blog. If you Like we said at the beginning, if you missed any of those articles that he did over the summer, you can go to RTC4. Just click on the little uh, icon there. It says Val T Sports Blog and check them all out. So anything else here before we go? It's just a busy time. Just thank you, for your, thank you for your support for the last 20 years, and thank you for your patience. I'm going to get around to these football previews. I've interviewed every coach except for the Winnemac coach, and uh, we'll, all, we'll also have a radio show. Uh, Randy Wynn and I will be doing the uh, football season preview show uh, Monday night on WROI. I believe it's going to start at 6 or 6.30, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. So it should be good when you're going to be talking to all the coaches that uh, you guys cover there, or that ROI covers. So yeah. Everybody we cover, except for Pioneer and Ad North Miami, I think. Yeah, I believe Joe Grant will show up from North Miami as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's going to do it for us here. I hope everybody has a uh, good evening, and we'll be back next week as we talk more sports as we get ready for week one of football, and we have some volleyball and soccer highlights, hopefully, to, uh, to show you. So thanks for tuning in, everybody.